The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to the island. Whoa. My name is Justin Island Boy McElroy here. Wait, hold on. Let me just, I, I have prepared this for you. Let me get it finished stirring it up. I get the mint out of there. Perfect. I've prepared you this mojito. Please take it. Take a sip. Make sure the mint's not too pronounced. Sometimes my muddling gets away from me. I'm still Justin McElroy, by the way. Hi there. I am Travis Hammock Time McElroy. Stop. Hammock time. Take a little nap here. I've strung uh, this hammock up over uh, the the cool white sand between these two palm trees. Uh, you can just slightly hear the crackle of a bonfire down the beach. We're getting some uh, roast pork ready for you. But for right now, you just take a little nap here. Hi, I'm Griffin Coconut Bra McElroy. And hey, where'd my... Where'd my plate with a nice fresh sandwich on it go? Oh, it looks like a couple little hermit crabs got it and scuttling down the beach. That's okay, little dudes. You can keep that one. Just listen to that fucking tide roll in. So soft. Welcome to our super chill, anxiety-free oasis. Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me Island, a place where you can get away from it all for an hour and just fucking chill. Uh, There's a lot going me. on in all of our lives right now. Uh, and I mean everybody. Some people are having babies. Some people are about to have babies. There's mm, election mm. stuff going on. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, excuse me. I'm Gary. And it uh, looks to me like you brought some anxiety into the anxiety-free episode. So I'm going to need you to put that in this basket. And we're just going to push it on down the river. There's a river uh, and a beach. So put uh, that right in here now. Visualize nice. it floating away. And that you, nice. lis- listener, I know you got some stress, some freak out juice in there too. I need you to just barf all that up right here in this basket and down the river it goes. And where do the baskets end up? It's a mystery that we'll never solve. Oh, it's like Lost oh, Season 5. A gator just ate my anxiety. Does that make me feel better or worse? <laughs> that, well, that, feel bad for the gator for sure. Yeah, well, defo. Yeah, that's that poor the anxiety. Guy. That's the anxiety gator. He's got the weight. Of a nation's woes upon his sh- his scaly shoulders. He's a fucking hero. <laughs> yeah, he's he a is. champion, and we're not going to dwell on him though. That's no, his don't problem. Don't look at the anxiety yours. gator. It's not your problem anymore. <laughs> the, welcome to this super chill episode of my brother, my brother. And me. It's going to be so relaxing. Uh, I, I'm going to do a Jimmy Buffett tune later. Oh, that'll be nice. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be that'll be really nice. So that'll be up a little later in the show. I want to know more about Gary. I've got a kite museum. A museum all <laughs> full of kites? Yeah, they're wow. all my kites. I bought them. <laughs> well, that's great, Gary. Nobody's going to try to take them from you. Some I know they defensive. won't, because that would give me anxiety, and that's against the law here. <laughs> Is it just <laughs> a room full of store-bought kites, Gary? Yeah, I did some some decor <laughs> on some of them. Cut cut little holes in fun shapes. Now they don't fly so much anymore, but that's okay. These aren't flying kites. These are display kites. You don't have any fighter kites like Doug Funny's dad made? You're right, I don't have... See? Damn it, Justin! I don't (laughs) have those, and now I'm... Damn it, Justin! I'll get you one later, so don't even worry about it. Oh, nice. So we'll we'll get to... We'll get to our music a little later. We got uh, a lot of fun, easygoing questions for you. It's just going to be a real chill episode here at the island. So kick I'm, back, relax. I'm going to routinely uh, just smell my baby's head. And, just and smell that's that just baby's head. Whew, take me away. Oh, take me away. So here's our first question. I go to college, and my school has a shuttle system to help us get around the campus. 
It's not real efficient, but it beats walking around late at night. Tonight was really busy with lots of people getting on and off, and I made the mistake of sitting in the very back. The shuttle driver forgot about me, and general oh. social nervousness has stopped me from speaking up. Now, the shuttle driver parked and went into a Popeye's. <laughs> I presume to pick up his dinner, and he has left me sitting in the Popeye's parking lot. I am locked in, and oh my god, I have no idea what to do. Do I oh, politely no. cough when he comes back? Do I wait until other people come on and then leave with them? <laughs> Please help me. This has gone on for far too long, and I'm terrified I'll become the shuttle ghost. <laughs> Please help my god help, meek and marooned in Maryland. Uh, and there's a postscript. Uh, P.S. This is not the first time this has happened, but last time it was just with a McDonald's drive through <laughs> <laughs> This may be the most lose-lose scenario. Like, lose-lose-lose-lose-lose-lose <laughs> scenario I've ever... I, I don't know if it's that I'm just a little bit, like, sleep-deprived. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, the good news is you're at Popeyes. So you can go in there and you can get some you can get some some of that good chicken. Also, another sort of follow up question here, is your bus driver Elliot Kalen? Because if so, just like hang Ask out him with the him. good things to get. He's yeah. got the good recos. Oh, um, I have an idea. I have an idea. Please. Okay. Move up to the front seat of the shuttle and be waiting patiently. And when he comes back, just say, Did you grab those biscuits for me? And now it's on him. Now he's forgotten a whole interaction he, be, he had. Can you imagine, Travis? You are this shuttle bus driver, the end of a long shift, dropping off uh, ungrateful college users, and then oh, finally dropped them all off. Time to lock this baby up and go in for my favorite part of my whole week, my Popeye's chicken meal. <laughs> my doctor says I can only have one Popeye's chicken meal per month. Or else I'll instantly die, so I'm really going to savor it. And so you get it, and you have it, and you savor it, and then you go, and you open up the bus that you think is empty, and some smart Alec is just like, <laughs> hey, where's my... You would, you, would, you would have a lot to feed the anxiety well, gator after that particular run. Well, I'm I'm other than that, Griffin, someone... what do you do? Do you cough in the back, and he turns around and just throws his Popeyes at you and panic? <laughs> I'm coming up with solutions, and none of them... The problem I keep coming up against is this. If you alert him to your presence, he is going to feel obligated to drive you somewhere. Yeah. And his food is going to get cold. And that's no good. And he's going to resist that. I'm worried about you indirectly murdering this man. Yeah. yeah the like shuttle driver is going to come back and you're going to go, ahem, <laughs> he's just going to die. Yeah, he'll you die. Okay, that's here's that's the, the main cons- That's my main point of concern right now is how do you not kill this hardworking Popeye's man? Here's, here's, okay. Here's an option. When he returns to the van, or uh, it's a shuttle. When he returns to the shuttle, just uh, stand up very slowly in the back and start slow clapping, okay? Hmm. And then when he's like, uh, excuse me, you say, congratulations. And he'll be like, what? And you'll say, well, I am a secret writer. I am paid by the shuttle company. I've been evaluating your performance all day. And you have done one hell of a job. In all my years, I have not seen better service in a shuttle driver. So congratulations. I'm going to be telling HQ if you could just drop me off at HQ, which looks like a dorm, very much like a dorm, uh, at your leisure, feel free to enjoy your chicken. You've earned it. But uh, if you could just do that for me, uh, I'm so proud of you, and you've done such a wonderful job. I, um, I can't. I, I've decided that this person might like shuttle ghost is is the appropriate thing because you live in that shuttle now. But oh, you do other there. people. Yeah. Yes. Other people, though, if you find yourself in this scenario. I would say that this is one of the few scenarios I can think of that out like outreaches anxiety and social anxiety. You have to say something before it gets to this point. Yeah. Like you have, like you, if you're the last one on the bus, you could just say like, "Drop me off anywhere." Don't wait until you're <laughs> already parked and locked in the shuttle at the Popeyes. It might yeah. be too late. I yeah, it might be too late for you. I take umbrage with the postscript of. This bus driver driving their bus through a McDonald's drive-through. 
Because if I was working a drive through and I saw a fucking bus pull up to the, to the, you know, the burger zone, I would just throw myself in the deep fryer. There is no way I want to handle uh, a, an order that convoluted for everybody on the, the bus. Do you think it was the same shuttle driver both times? It but has if you're to like, be. ahem, they're like, damn it, <laughs> again? God no, they've damn just, it. They've still been on the shuttle. They haven't figured out a way to get, get off yet. Um, <laughs> can I read you a food related uh, who? Uh, oh, is that like a, br- a who? Yahoo? Yeah, because it's got an exclamation point. We don't always. We don't always enunciate that, so I'm thinking we just sort of backload. We we make the word bottom heavy a little bit more and just be like, "Yahoo!" Go for it's it. in its fucking death throes, and I just want to I want to party with Yahoo before it's gone. Mm-hmm. This one was sent in by Pete Carl Two, maybe the second, but like he specifically mentions in the email that he wants to be called PK Two. Which is a very good name, and also I very think a good. kind of drug. Uh, thank you, BK2. It's by Yahoo Answers user. Oh, it loaded for a second. It just Sarah. Sarah asks, "How old do you have to be to eat out at a restaurant?" My friends and I, six of us in total, are planning to go out to the mall. There are restaurants in the mall, and we're wondering if we're allowed to go out to eat at legit places. For example, Lazy Dog Cafe Bistro. I hope there's not an actual place on earth called Cafe Bistro. That's crazy. (laughs) Um, We're all, uh, uh, we're all 13 years old. If we can't go to restaurants like stated above, does anyone know what sort of places we could possibly go to? Now I know you're hearing this and you think Griffin, this is a stupid question. This is a stupid question for dumb people, but there's a right answer to it in there. Cause if you're a host or a hostess at a, at an Outback Steakhouse and a fleet of six year olds walks in, How's that gonna? How's that gonna shape up? How's that particular uh, encounter gonna break down? You're gonna I resign. Feel, I feel like it's interesting to me because had they said it's me and one friend, I would have said thirteen is too young. But for some reason, six, thirteen. I'm wondering if there's some kind of like conglomerate age rule of thumb that if your combined age is older than seventy five but younger than two hundred, that group of people is allowed to go to that thing. It has never been my experience that the more tweens in a flock, the better socially it is for everybody else around. I guess I I'm looking at it as a patron yeah. of the restaurant. If I looked over and saw two 13-year-olds having a meal together, it would be weird. <laughs> but okay. if I see six of them, I'm like, oh, they're celebrating something. Well, maybe they just if, get- you, if you see two 13-year-olds eating together, they're filming a scene for Boy Meets World. Yeah, like, absolutely. Period. The end. Or they just got out of their first date at Prince of Egypt, and they were just wowed by a beautiful historic tale with music by the Osmonds, and they just wanted to get a you know a bloomin' onion, and then maybe go home and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Prince uh, of Egypt has inspired me, honey. Let's go home and see what happens. So uh, what? So it's six thirteen-year-olds looking for a place to eat. Uh, let's let's abstract it. You're the host of the Olive Garden. Justin, okay. I know this is a fucking dream for you. Mm-hmm. Finally, I rose up. Rose up the ranks. You are a host of Olive Garden. And let's stick with two, because I like the idea of it being two of them. Two, we have I'm important gonna, things to discuss. I'm just going to say a number, and we'll walk it up, okay? Two five-year-olds walk in, and they're like, No. Spaghetti pleats. <laughs> Spaghetti pleats, sir. That makes my night. I'm gonna be on. I'm gonna be on the nightly news. I think I, in the local news, like you'll never believe it. Last These two story. five year olds had a spaghetti date. I, I can <laughs> definitely so say, I, like Disney has taught me that the gap between two dogs coming in for spaghetti and five year olds, I yeah. definitely don't allow between that though. Like, okay, it's, 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 you're it's, either two dogs or five yes. years old. It's obviously adorable, right? But this is a fucking business. This is a place of business, and we they're have, unaccompanied. The, they are on a company. These are just two five spaghetti peas. Do you want p- spaghetti and peas, or are you just like, do you have money? Like, uh, you guys are not as concerned about these two five year olds as I. How did you get oh, here? I- how are you getting home, Griffin? I just don't know how I would look them in their tiny eyeballs and turn them. Up. No, go yeah. away, go yeah. away, hungry five year olds. Here's, here's a handful of Andy's mints. Never come back to let's, the Olive okay, Garden. Okay, then let's walk it up. Ten year olds. Okay. Two ten year olds. 
No. A hard no from Travis. Hard no. That what are you you're turning them away? Yeah. Not without parents. What, what, what if they just got off work? They just want to relax. Yeah. That's a good point. I I don't know. They can't they can't go see a James Bond movie by themselves. I don't know if they can eat by themselves. They you will need to cut their <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what if I'm one definitely going to need to see the green. Yeah. You're going to need to flash that wad before I let him in. But that's, discrim- that's, gonna, that's that, discrimination, though. That's going to be hard. Like, okay, I'm rethinking the five-year-olds. Okay, what if thank they're you, like, see? What if they're like, uh, I'll have the uh, Thai peanut noodles, please. And you say, do you have a peanut allergy? And they say, I have absolutely no idea. Let's find out yeah. together. <laughs> I'm a real badass five-year-old with a leather jacket, by the way. Do you know the number that makes the big ambulances come? Just in case <laughs> I do have an uh, an adverse reaction to the peanuts. Do you you know do, do you know the big they're big loud scary cars and they put sick people into them uh to go to the to the hop siddle. Uh, is that right? Am I saying that correctly? <laughs> I've uh I've written down here just a list of all of my food allergies just to make sure there's no confusion. Uh this is just like a squiggle. Yes. Yes, that's um, exactly right. Mm-hmm. I don't see the issue here. Do you take uh, American Express? <laughs> oh, and uh, I had an oopsie. If you could send someone out. I did out. have a, du- a duke. And <laughs> also, this is very important. I did see a fire truck today. So, excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll await my dish. I will need you to cut it up for me. What if what if two one hundred and fifty year olds come just See, sort this of this is what I'm saying just sort of slug slop their way their like <laughs> skin mass like in through the door leaving a trail of just spume behind them and two they fit nurses bring them in in wheelbarrows yeah just, just sort dump of them onto the ju- chair just sort of um filling the wheelbarrows with their self crud. <laughs> and they say, please. <laughs> do you sit, th- do you, Travis, this one's for you. Would you sit mm-hmm. these two 150 year old wheelbarrow people? I would, Griffin, but not together. Interesting. I would find one. them like a table with an empty seat, two tables, I guess, with an empty seat at each. And I would just kind of force a Tuesdays with Maury kind of scenario. Oh, where I would let these year old to one one hundred and fifty mm-hmm. year old. Hmm. I liked the scene in Tuesdays with Maury where the small boy had to dump the spaghetti onto the one hundred and fifty year old Maury man, and then he just sort mm-hmm. of he sort of sat there and he Mitch described Mitch album described in graphic detail how the spaghetti sort of just sort of um. Fo- like formed into his 150 year old sloppy body it just kind of was engulfed by his skin bag and it just kind of was was maury at that point excuse me w- waiter um when you bring the spaghetti could you bring a lot of it in a small pool yes the I believe it's the Patch Adams. I hate to go off menu, but it's my life dream to to swim. Do you serve that? A, a swimming pool full of noodles? And the five-year-old leans over and says, I'll have what he's having. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you guys hear that? I didn't. I actually I d- didn't. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, because my Skype is breaking up pretty bad right now. I just hear like three seconds of silence. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, that's so strange. I want a mud squad! I want to mud squad! Hold on. No, 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 no. This is the anxiety free fucking island party zone, Travis. Let's go. I can't yell. It would wake my baby up. I don't. That's causing me anxiety. There it is. I said it with a smile. Is that better? A little bit. You can tell that you want to hear the difference? Squad. What, yeah, Squad. Justin, what violent delights do you have for us this week? <laughs> well, uh, who's <laughs> first I should say, who's hungry? I actually kind of am right now, but I bet that's not going to last. That's not going to impact. Is it going to be a the, fucking kid's pool full of spaghetti that a 150-year-old man can just kind of like slop around in? 
No, but slop's the right word because we're headed over to Carl Jr.'s or Hardy's, depending okay. on where you are. And we're just keep, and we're just we're, gonna keep on driving. We, you know, we're gonna pull in, and we are going to order the Budweiser beer cheese bacon burger. <laughs> no, oh. no. <laughs> do you know? Do you know how when you have Budweiser and cheese, you think mm, good? <laughs> But when I washed one down with the other, yeah. um, I really liked that combo. Well, this, good news. Hardee's is there for you. It's like, this is the equivalent of like, it's a fresh new salad, but we washed it with toilet water. Do you know how they're um, po- known for pioneering in the quick service restaurant industry by regularly releasing creatively charged industry first premium burger offerings? Well, according to this press release, they have done it again with the Budweiser beer cheese bacon burger. Now, this is served on a brioche style premium bun. Brioche style bun, not brioche, but there's something it's in that as style. In, as inspired by the artist formerly known as brioche. It's so far from brioche, we can't legally call it brioche. Yeah, it is. Oh, we'd really brioche. have the bread boys breathing down our neck if we but, tried to pull that shit again. But do yeah. not sweat it. It is premium as fuck. This is a primo fake brie. This is this is the same like fast food restaurant that like put potato chips and a hot dog on a hamburger, right? They'll put fucking anything yeah, on a hamburger at, Car- at Hardee's. But listen, this is a new burger with uh, and it, this is piled high with thick cut applewood smoked bacon. Nobody knows still what applewood is and what that does to the flavor of the bacon, but yeah, it is mm-hmm. applewood and it's got Swiss cheese on it. But the cheese don't stop there. It's topped with Budweiser beer cheese. Why did they double? Che- why did they double cheese this one? Who was they the? Just, who was that? Can I ask who the chef was on this project? Yeah, who ate this without cheese and was like, mm, not cheesy enough. Yeah. The, but it's a hot and creamy cheddar cheese sauce this blended is- <laughs> with the classic taste of America's number one full flavored lager. So when you drink Budweiser and think the getting drunk is fine, yeah. but I'm really here for the flavor. I wish it was in a non-alcoholic cheese. They've got you covered. Are you sure that the cheese... First Good of all, question. I'm still obsessed with this Lara Swiss and its purpose. I think it, mm-hmm. I think it, I think it might be load-bearing. I think it may be it a load-bearing like they, Lara Swiss. It sounds like they had another burger just laying around, and they're yes. like, okay, well, we'll just all serve right. this. I'm like, no, we've already served them. Um, the other... Yeah. The, I can't... I Are you sure, Justin, it's non-alcoholic cheese? Pos- po- positive it is non-alcoholic cheese then why Man, that, that would really turn this whole thing around for me Th- there is there is one situation in which bud Weiser is the, your choice and it is when you are at some sort of tailgating party and that's it and you don't want to be there and you want to just sort of have like a, ha- a a cold a cool friend in your hand Do i you actually i actually take- think that's I think that's the Budweiser slogan. Your choice of beer when you didn't get to choose the beer that would be there. Yeah, it is football happening, and you didn't really get a say in it. Have we're <laughs> your cool friend in your hand? But by the way, this version of it, there's no alcohol. So <laughs> what are you fucking doing? And it's I got Brad cheese, Haley on, and it's cheat. You can't even drink it this time. I got Brad Haley on the line. He's the chief marketing officer. What's for he sound like? I wonder. Carl, Carl <laughs> you. Our new uh, Budweiser beer cheese bacon burger combines the best of what we do with Budweiser <laughs> beer cheese sauce, applewood smoked bacon, and caramelized onions on the charbroiled, grass-fed, all-natural beef patty. It really is a beer and burger lover's dream come true. Hey, beer and burger lovers, <laughs> dream <laughs> bigger! <laughs> hey, hey, guys, can you dream bigger for me? <laughs> Can you do that for me, burger and beer lovers? You're dreaming of Budweiser and fast food cheese Mm. on your burgers and beer? Here's what I want. Here's Mm -hmm. a dream I have. This would be a fun, crazy, weird, like a hamburger stout. That's crazy. That's Mm. a dream. A a burger that it sounds like maybe someone actually spilled some beer on and then it sat long enough for it to no longer be alcoholic. It's maybe not the dream I have. I don't know of any beer lover that's like, you know what my dream? 
just like if I could just have Budweiser, but not yeah. not alcoholic and in cheese form. Now. That's my dream. Now, is there more quotes? Are there more tasty quotes? Because I have an idea. Um, it is being promoted with a documentary style new ad campaign. No, fuck that. See, this is my <sighs> idea. Fuck that ad campaign. Okay. I think instead of doing the patented Carl's commercial. That's basically just like a, 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 you know, a woman on a car and the, the burger is getting just all over. Same vein, but control F, find Jessica Simpson. Control R, replace with one of the Bud, Budweiser horses, one of those Clydesdales. <laughs> and this Clydesdale is up on a Ferrari and he is just smashing this fucking thing to pieces because he weighs two tons and he is not supposed to be up there. But also he is just, he is just ruined with this <laughs> beer cheese just all over him. And he's enjoying, I think he would enjoy the burger, but there's no way, like he's just slopping and he just like smashed a hoof through the windshield and is freaking the fuck out. Yeah, and in the last second of the commercial, they cut to the Budweiser frogs, and they're like, now we're horny. Yeah. That makes them horny. <laughs> and then they fuck right there. And then the and cheese- they have a baby, and yeah. then uh, they lay eggs, and then out of the eggs emerges the Carl Jr. slash Hardy's Budweiser beer cheese bacon burger. Loving it. And then the three frogs are on the car, and they're eating the burger, but the hot cheese falls on them and burns them to death. And they say, what a decadent, decadent way to die. Or, but they say it like they take turns saying the words in it. I should have mentioned that uh, Josh Halpern, who's the vice president of small format and on-premise for Anheuser-Busch, uh, was complimenting the Carl Jr. and Hardy's partnership. Uh, and he says, Carl Jr. and Hardy's are known for pushing boundaries. And they truly share Anheuser Busch's commitment to quality ingredients and authenticity. Uh, could we leave some boundary? Could did we when we started pushing boundaries? Did anybody stop for a second to think what's on the fucking outside of those boundaries? Yeah. And maybe we put those boundaries up for a good reason. I have put some weird shit on a sandwich, and no one's ever been like, no one's ever said that Travis. He sure does push boundaries. They've just said that Travis. He sure has made some sandwich monstrosities in his time. He's a human wreck. Anyway, I mean, that's not anymore. Now I'm someone's father. Yeah. Can we do a quick question? I think we have time for one more quick question for the money zone. Yeah. Yes, please. I own several calf high socks as a result of various circumstances. However, as a big boy, my calf high socks quickly become very uncomfortable ankle socks. I get to the bottom of my sock drawer and I start wondering if garters can be everyday wear. How do I ensure maximum ankle comfort? And that's from trying not to have a cow over my calves in Montana. I'm curious what everybody's sock choices are because I have evolved. I evolved several times in my life. Mm. And I'm curious where you're all at. I know at. you were into those tall, tall gold toe shits for a while. Used to be into that. Then I got into like the sneaky ones that are real small and she just above mm-hmm. the shoes. Hello. Don't tell. Don't you tell. Tell you, what I, tell you what I love. Black ankle socks. They're like black. Like they're, you know, like your traditional white sock. Only black. They go with nothing. Yeah. But they also don't ever get dingy and gross looking. I fucking got a subscription to Foot Cardigan. Not a sponsor of the show. Just a proud member of their community every month i get a fun new sock pattern i'm like rip taylor down there now every day but when it's (laughs) time when when it's time for something a little bit more serious i have a 16 pack of very short very sexy puma socks that um uh that rachel got me at costco and i'll wear those and they breathe and then if i have to like leave the office and go to the basketball court. It's just a. It's just an all day thing. It's an all day wear. Um, I, I bought do a bunch like of, the. Sorry. I bought a bunch of dark socks uh, right before we filmed our show because Maximum Thorn, uh, Maximum, Maximum Fun Founder. I am Maximum Thorn. Maximum Thorn. Maximum Fun Founder and uh, Style Guru Jesse Thorn told me, "quote I don't want to be on TV wearing white socks." So mm-hmm. I bought a bunch of dark socks because that had not even entered my. Uh, 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 
I, I had no idea, yeah. I guess, that the white socks. And I'll tell you the fun thing about starting to wear dark socks more is, like, they probably look the best when you're wearing an outfit. They're the least durable, I think, style-wise. You mm-hmm. took one article of clothing away, and you're a, a, a disaster. <laughs> this like is true. You switch to shorts because it gets a little hot. Oops, mm. you're a mess. You're a total wreck. Um, I really, I have a few pairs of the fancier pattern socks like Griffin described, and I love them. I love them so very much. But my chosen footwear is cowboy boots, and it feels weird it, to have yeah. that kind of flashiness and no one can see it. It just feels like the most narcissistic sock choice to put on a flashy, like, I have a pair I got from Loot Crate, not a sponsor of the show, just a big fan, that are Sonic the Hedgehog themed with rings all the way up. Oh, well, and don't when wear, I wear hey, those. No, don't wear those. Huh? Don't wear but those. But that's just a secret for me. But that's just a secret for me. Uh, but now everybody knows, Trav, and I'm going to assume you're always wearing them. In my mind, when I picture you holding my beautiful new niece, you're wearing those uh-huh. fucking socks, and I can't take you I'm seriously. someone's father, and I accidentally wore a pair of Deadpool socks to the NICU because it was what I grabbed out in the dark out of yeah. the drawer. Now, no one could see them because I was wearing long pants, but I knew, I knew I was someone's father holding... Wearing, holding a baby, wearing some Deadpool socks. Maybe also I wore the Sonic socks on a different day, but that was on Travis. purpose so I could have my own little Sonic secret. Did, just did for somebody me. else they- at the hospital look over and like look at your feet and look at you holding a small human life? And then you looked at them and smiled and just said, gotta go fast, chili dogs. <laughs> and then I slammed with my free hand because one hand had the baby. I just slammed the chili dog in one, like one mouthful with my left yeah. hand. And then and Dr. You know Robot- what? Dr. They Robotnik wept. came in and turned all the babies into bad robots. And then you had to fight them all off. Man, I love that little blue bastard. I wish he, I wish he was real. Gotta go fast. God, I hope that's um, what heaven is like. Going fast. Uh, let's go to the money zone. We talked a lot about socks here today, and those are fine, but they don't touch your dick unless you're the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I guess. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I want to tell you about MeUndies. It doesn't just touch your dick. It touches any genitalia you got down there. Whatever you're working with, MeUndies will cover it and keep that your secret. Uh, uh, Imagine a world where putting on a new pair of underwear isn't just fresh. You're stepping into a better day. It's the first thing you put on, the last thing you take off, unless you're nasty. Why would you settle for anything less than the best feeling underwear on the planet? I do. I do want to say, sometimes I wear me undies as socks, but that's just because I have a very random personality and a very random like South Park humor. <laughs> I do it, but only it. because I have a very polished floor, and I like to really slide around on it. Yeah, it's fun. That mode will They're- really, really go. It's well, a real slickery ask- fabric. Yeah. It's a special fabric made with the best in-class raw materials that are scientifically proven to be three times softer than cotton. For a limited time, our listeners get 20% off your first order, but you got to go to our special URL, MeUndies.com slash my brother. Go to MeUndies.com slash my brother right now for 20% off your first order. That's MeUndies.com slash my my brother. Do you guys feel like I, we don't do a lot of evening recordings? Uh, uh, do you guys feel like I'm in really good voice tonight? I feel really, I'm articulating things really well. I feel really good. It's about funny you say that. I feel like my instrument. throat is full of Anheuser Busch beer cheese. Yeah. That's, I, actually, I just feel like mine's rough and raw. I coated mine in that good, wet cheese because I went to Carl's Jr. And I said, hold the burger, please. Just a small cup. Uh, just take one of those free water cups. Fill it in with you know me. that you know that golden stuff I crave. <laughs> they when Carl wants to fr- please me, he's yeah, only got he's only to got cheese me. <laughs> you know they will actually put it on fries for you, but they they crumble bacon on top of it because why not? Health is why not. Health. Oh yeah, living as <laughs> living living life healthful with health in it. Not even like a lot of health, but like a normal amount of health is why you wouldn't. I think. Oh, and self respect is the only other reason. That's the only other thing. There's just two th- health and self respect is why not to do it. As a new dad, I would mm. like to tell you guys about the most important thing in the world mm-hmm. sleep. I was trying to come oh. up with a joke there, but you see, I'm so sleep deprived, I couldn't think of anything funny to say right now. And I'm going to keep this anxiety free. Teresa and I are sleeping two hours at a time. 
That's not good. Uh, and then and then feeding for an hour, feeding the baby for an hour. Damn, that's a hungry, sleeping. thirsty baby. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of diaper changing in there too, and like unwrapping and rewrapping mm. um, of various onesies and swaddlers and stuff. And then we sleep for two hours. And I tell you what, if we weren't doing it on a Casper mattress, I don't know that we would get to really just savor those two hours like we are now. Yeah. You know, but it's easy to lay right back down, fall right back asleep. Um, thanks to our Casper mattress. Casper is a sponsor of the show this week, uh, as well as we're still working on that episode. It kind of got thrown for a loop our, a little bit our because Halloween special. Yeah. Well, we weren't anticipating a surprise baby and it kind of yeah. threw off the schedule a little bit. Um, but Casper, uh, is an online retailer of premium, obsessively engineered mattresses. And the best thing is they're a fraction of the price of what you would pay at like a big box mattress store because they keep their overhead down. Uh, and you know, it's all done online. Um, and when you open it up, it's real fun. They ship it to you like in a box that looks way too small for a mattress to be in. You open it up. It kind of foomps out. Like it magic. impresses everybody. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Everybody that you've invited to your mattress unboxing. Uh, which should be all your closest friends, really. Um, but they have a risk free, uh, risk free trial and return policy. So you can try sleeping on a Casper for a hundred days with free delivery to the US and Canada and painless returns. And the mattresses are made in America, which is always great if you love America like I do. Um, pricing is about $500 for a twin size mattress and $950 for a king size mattress, which is just a great deal for anyone who's, uh, anyone can tell you who's ever shopped for mattresses before. And my brother, my brother, me listeners can get $50 towards any mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash my brother and use the promo code my brother, all one word at checkout terms and conditions apply. Um, we got some jump. What's wrong? Nothing. I'd read into the first personal message. Oh Sorry. no, we're we're gonna get there. I do want to say uh, we have not had any openings for jumbotrons lately. It's because we just got all full up. Uh, but Maximum Fun is gonna open up some slots in 2017. So if you do want to get a message on the show, um, uh, the, those slots are gonna open up on Monday, November 28th. That's Cyber Monday at noon uh, Pacific. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the spots are, uh, again, going to be in 2017. It's weird even like having to like say this, it's so, uh, humbling and great that folks are, uh, just like so excited to get messages on the show that, uh, they are, they have filled us right the hell up for like a whole year. Um, but if you want to get a message on the show in 2017, uh, again, those spots are going to open up Cyber Monday, Monday, November 28th at 12 noon Pacific. Justin, you want to read this message since you were goofing on it? Yeah, I just got a kick out of, uh, and this is this is adjacent to what you're just discussing. This is a message for Kate, and it's from Leslie, and it says, "It was between this or another haunted doll this year." Happy birthday, Kate! Do that's it's like a D with fifteen O's after it, and it just says she'll know. So hopefully, Kate appreciated that. Um, maybe that's her ASMR. The reason I laughed is because the uh, preferred time frame for this message to air. Uh, it, it says next recording April 8th is, was her birthday, but I totally get if you can't make that date happen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, Leslie, <laughs> that is putting it mildly. Y'all, uh, we used to joke about like, we're closer to the next birthday than we are like a month closer to the next birthday than we are the last one. So maybe since we're selling all the jumbo for 2017, like all at once, maybe, maybe they can like be shuffled in such a way where it's that like would be closer. Fun. Yeah. I don't know. That sounds like a nightmare to try to do. We we should or force Stacy to do that, but I have it. When you when you buy a Jumbotron, date it for two that like say happy birthday in two thousand eighteen. Yeah. And that's then good. they'll all be hopefully early. Uh I have another message here. This one is for smart sexy science lady and it's from your bearded bus driver, Bo Maybe Boy? Or maybe just Bo. I don't know. Uh, they say to smart, sexy science lady, hey, I want to just say how much I love you. Lady, I may not have the weekends off anymore, uh, but we will try to find time to do things together, like listening to all of the McElroy Brothers content. Thank you for making my life easier and more enjoyable. Hopefully, I do the same for you. Now, now I'm gonna this bring does ho- sound I'm like they you- know each other. I'm going to bring you home some good, good Popeyes later. <laughs> Um, by the way, there's a ghost in my bus again, and I'm going to need you to call the priest. 
this does sound like they know each other and this is definitely like a relationship message, but there's also a world in which this is a bus driver who has seen like a sexy science lady come on his bus and usually has the weekends off. So he works Mondays, but now they've changed his schedule. So he doesn't have weekends off anymore. And this is like his misconnections. Like this is his ad. A woman that, that this person is attracted to walks onto the bus with two Erlenmeyer flasks full of fluid. Mm -hmm. Ever, and it's like blue and like green science fluid. And so he just knows what her field is. Mm hmm. And she looks at him a lot and goes, hmm, and then mixes them. And there's a little like poof cloud that comes out of yeah, the top. That's and great. she quickly jots down her observations. That's fun. Hi, everybody. I'm Justin McElroy. And I'm Dr. Sydney McElroy. Every week, we release a medical history podcast called Sawbones. We go over the history of the dumbest, grossest, weirdest stuff humans have been doing to each other since the dawn of mankind. But it's a funny show. But it's also so disgusting and stomach-turning, you won't believe it. But it's also, like, (laughs) funny. It's funny. It is the wildest, grossest, nastiest stuff you can imagine. It's a real hoot. It's called Sawbones, and we release it every week on iTunes, wherever podcasts are sold, and right here on MaximumFun.org. Do you guys want a Yahoo? Yeah, when are we going to do this musical number? I'm wondering when will be the best time to just sort of deploy that. I, got a great I think Jimmy maybe the end, of, the, the end of the or, show, or maybe. Okay. Yeah, all right. That sounds good. What if we forget, though? Probably won't. We, yeah. Probably won't. Well, what if we do, though? So this one was oh. sent in by uh, Brandon Giles. Brandon Giles. Oh, friend, hey. Friend, friend of uh, the, the the show, the, the fam. Brandon Giles. Thank you, Brandon. It's by Yahoo Answers user. They're anonymous, and for good reason, because their fucking question is, which is the baby, the egg or the sperm? Guys... How is this not like? How is this not like a chicken or the egg, uh, cake or pie, diaper or bucket like situation? I think it's obvious. the The sperm is the baby, and the egg is the house. This is a mm. good theory, Travis. Can you uh, talk for maybe like ten whole minutes about the science <laughs> behind what you just said? Well, Griffin, let me explain. I'm pretty sure the egg stays in one place once it settles into the uterine lining. And it's the sperm that's active and mobile and finds the egg. Yeah. So it seems like the sperm is active before the egg is. So it seems like it starts there. Yeah. That's if you're going by motility or mobility. I can't remember which one's which. Do you just want to also point out that you just had a baby uh, a couple Mm -hmm. weeks ago and I'm the doctor explained all this to me. Yeah. I just, I guess I just sort of wasn't paying attention. I, about the whole birds and the bees process, I just know it was a it, lot of fun for me, right? <laughs> I it actually grew up. It wasn't until <laughs> <laughs> when I oh held boy. the baby for the. F- <laughs> it actually wasn't until I held the baby for the first time that the doctor kind of leaned her head around the corner and went, "By the way, it started with sperm," and like she just kind of ran away. Yeah, it was this very. This was confusing. sperm first, and it lived in an egg house. And Bye. It wasn't a doctor's coat she was wearing. She was actually wrapped herself in toilet paper in like a reasonable simulcra of a doctor's coat. I, it was very weird. Odd. And I've I, never seen her before, and I was at a 7 Eleven. Uh huh. I have another theory, and I'm sorry, Dr. Travis. It's, no, the, inver- it's the inverse theory. And again, theory, because all of this is unprovable. I think the egg might be the baby, and uh-huh. but it's not active yet and then my sperm is like a magic spell that just brings okay. that that egg to life so you're saying that the uh, the the egg is an android mm-hmm. and the sperm is like the wish that Haley Joel Osment makes on a star yeah mm-hmm. in AI uh-huh. basically. Yes. that's one good way Topical. of thinking about it I mean uh, crack open a chick uh, uh, the uh, an ordinary chicken's egg to make mm-hmm. a French toast or some sort of uh, late night egg meal. And what's in there is just like a chicken that didn't quite get the start it needed from the magic spell cast by Ooh. his daddy nut. That's really good. Well, I'm taking some of that last part about rooster nut. But other than that, that was actually a really well posited theory. Mm, think about it. So, like, I guess another way you could think about it is the egg is kind of like our body. Mm-hmm. And that nut 
is sort of <laughs> like the soul. Like mm-hmm. we, our bodies are just these fleshy exosuits that, and, and this is the theory, guys. This is it. The sperm just kind of climbs inside the egg, and the sperm is like the alive thing. But then the egg grows and grows and grows and becomes like the body, the baby body. Mm-hmm. But that sperm is in there, sort of controlling it from within, like the uh, little funny alien from Men in Black. Okay, so you're saying basically mm-hmm. that um, <laughs> basically <laughs> the egg, the you, you're saying basically that the egg is sort of the 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 Jaeger. And the sperm mm-hmm. is the the Charlie Hunnam, and no, but you're saying basically that's right, right? More, that's basically it. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, any way you want to shake it, any other sort of mech based thing you want to reference. Um, yes, I'm out. I'm out. Okay. Actually, I'm out. I no, try, we could go. There's Voltron, and then the five. The wait. I was going to make a okay. Durin Lagan poll, but I think I, there are listeners of this show who would know be- that stuff better than myself. You guys have to agree with me, right? Because every other sort of thing you could think of is complete garbage. And really, what well, I may have just sort of unlocked life, if you think about it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm trying to remember how Look Who's Talking starts. Yeah, what's and the I'm first pretty shot? Sure, I'm pretty sure the egg lands, and you can hear the egg think, like, I'm just a body waiting for a little soul. And then yeah. a sperm shows up. And I think he's got a fun accent, but I won't do it because I can't do accents. And, and he hello, says something hello, like, hello there, what's all this in? I'm a nut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit of soul, aren't I? I'm and then he just like swims soul. in. And then I think it's Bruce suit. Willis. I think it turns into Bruce Willis. Yeah. And I just think the while. whole movie, like, I think Kirstie Alley keeps looking at the baby and going, all this because some sperm animated my egg. Yeah, Justin. And she says that line a lot. Yeah, a few times. It feels like Travis and I might be doing most of the scientific heavy lifting on this question. Just wanted to, yeah, wanted to get weird. your t- just wanted to get your beak wet. Yeah, no. I, I feel like you guys have really covered the scientific end of this. I really I can't help but take a more religious approach. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of abstaining cuz I don't want to step on any toes. I mean, abstaining would be a more sort of religious approach to the to the process but um i think uh, i'm I, just my i'm looking at my body now and I'm, I'm talking right i'm moving my hands i'm gesticulating mm-hmm. all this is just coming from some coming <laughs> that's like inside <laughs> me and it's just like it's fucking pulling the tendons and the strings and it's like making me think the things i think wait hold on griffin are you pitching like a meet dave scenario in which the sperms are controlling Travis, your Travis, body do not get it twisted that is explicitly what i'm saying everybody is <laughs> Everybody's just a sperm suit? I mean, that's a gross way of thinking about the beautiful miracle that is life and existence, but yeah, Trav. Yeah. Uh, here, Here's a question. You want to move on from decide. this, huh? You don't want to spend another 13 minutes sort of unpacking it? I have one I want to read really quick, just to give a quick thumbs up or down, a uh, quick am I good clearance. Um, I pranked a guy in college. I replaced his protein powder with Nesquik, and he said I was dead to him. I found out we're in the same wedding party. If I don't go to the wedding, am I good? That's from Pranksman in Charleston. This is, uh, I know you wanted to get through this quick. We have to acknowledge the fact that this is a pretty bonkers prank to pull, right? Because, like, (laughs) it's one of those pranks where it's like, so what? Like, so what? You change, you change the beverage to a tastier beverage. And also, there's fucking literally no way that this person would have known. That they were he not drinking going, protein powder anymore. Yeah, his roommate was going to the gym and cranking it, mm-hmm. shredding it, goes home to give his muscles what they crave, and they just get that bunny milk. Yeah. That's not doing him any good. Yeah. And the problem is if you miss one serving of the protein powder, all your muscles deflate. Yeah. Like, that's, that's what they don't tell you. It's a razor's edge this kind of guy, regime. This guy deflated so much, you could see the sperm pilot inside of him. <laughs> Because I think this is twenty one sperm I, pilot. I know you wanted to move on, but I have to yeah. think that your body grows, right? Your sperm pilot probably grows too, so it's like the size like a big snake in you. Mm-hmm. Is that what yeah. your is that what your fucking spine is? Holy shit, you guys! It's your skull and your spine. It's it. It makes sense. It, it looks all like, makes sense. It looks like it looks like that nut. It just looks like the nut if you think about it. It just and like looks your brain like is there, nut. your brain is there, and like that's like your brain would be in the skull of the sperm, like telling it how to swim good to get in the mm-hmm. egg. 
It all makes so much sense. It all makes a lot of fucking sense. You have cracked they this not nut wide open. They have to go to the wedding, right? They still have to go? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, you have to go. Prank. You this, have to go. This is the most innocuous prank ever. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. I went to a Halloween party with my friends. I didn't know what to expect at this party. And when I got there, I saw that there were finger foods, which causes me pretty severe anxiety. What? I smoked far too much weed and discovered just how serious my anxiety is. I had an emotional breakdown right there in front of the spinach dip. <laughs> Can I come back from this and hang out with my friends or do I need to leave town? And that's for too high for this shit in Oregon. <laughs> I don't want to rag on this person's anxiety. Over- Obviously, this is a fucking anxiety free zone. I, I could right. see I could see why you would get, you know. Freaked out I would request that we not put the finger foods into the anxiety basket and send it down to the anxiety alligator yeah, who no, probably I'll, enjoy it yeah, I'll for be, a change. Yeah, I'll be the anxiety alligator for this particular anxiety, by which I mean, pa- pass that dip down Griffin's way, because Jesus, I'll destroy it. Um, oh man, I don't, do we need to record like a come down? I, 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 let me uh, let me say this. I will say this to you. Yeah. This seems so innocuous to me that I actually think you might have given your friends a gift with this. Because this is a fun story of that time one of their friends was so high that they cried over spinach dip. That's not... I don't know that there's a friend of yours right now who's like, I fucking hope they never show up again. Like, no, it's they not think, like you, I hope they always show up everywhere. That was amazing. Yeah, right? Like, that's a fun story. Like, I remember there's one time in college, they got so high they cried over spinach dip. That's funny. It's not yeah. like you got so drunk that you, like, you know, wrecked their car or, like, set sure. their couch on fire. But, but, but when you're, hmm, I don't know how to explain this to you boys. When you're sailing on that, on the SS Good Kush, Mm-hmm. You can do you can do some pre, you can do some stuff sometimes that may seem kind of whack to the outside observer in a way that makes them sort of uh, like a bit uncomfy. Um, I don't know if you. I I feel like I have a similar story to this where one time I was at a party and I was the first mate of that particular voyage and um, I saw an ex. And it gave me a it gave me a real bad real bad uh, f- feelings that I didn't my uh, ex yeah I saw an ex that my my big sperm didn't really know how to handle and it's um all, you know dubered up state and so my friend uh, who was the one who who invited me on the boat so to speak <laughs> uh, he, he told me to grab onto the back of his shirt. And the two of us ran from the party just squealing and giggling to the point of tears uh, while he sort of quarterback, like, snuck me out of the party, uh, like, uh, through the fucking front porch that everybody else was hanging out on. And I remember thinking Mm -hmm. the next morning, like, I need to shoot myself into space. I now, because I live on the fucking sun now. I live on, I'm the king of Mercury now because I can never, ever face any of those people ever again. But they don't know what was wrong with you. You could. They probably up. knew what was wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> At the same oh, time, so- like I don't, I don't. No judgment if I see somebody who's like on that ship, on that rocking and rolling boat, uh, and I see them having a bad time. I don't hold it against them. It's just I get where this person is coming from, and I can see them not laughing it right off. I feel like you have to, b- before it gets to a judgment zone, I feel like everybody's seen the, like, if if you party and your friends party, I feel like you've probably everybody's seen their friends over party. Everyone uh-huh. has partied too much. I feel like that you don't enter the judgment zone until it becomes like, oh, they're, they're the one who parties too much every single time like if five or six times of crying at spinach dip or yeah. big x or, apparently or one time of you physically fighting the spinach dip <laughs> like you show up you <laughs> no, show up to the part, you show up to the party on the good kush and then you see the spinach dip and you immediately fight it before anybody can enjoy it and it's homemade <laughs> and you just keep yelling i'm strong to the fennec yeah and just like over and over again yeah uh, folks, that's going to do it for us on our uh, anxiety-free cruise. We hope you enjoyed. Did we do a it. good job? I hope yeah. we did. I feel I feel like it was pretty pretty chill. Okay. I think it was a pretty chill zone. I would like to I would like to pitch something. 
Okay. Okay. I would like to pitch like a 20 second bubble in which I can say something that may induce anxiety, but then Justin, you're going to swing it right back with your musical number. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's save that for the very, let's save that for like literally the end of the show. How about that? How about we, we finish this, we hop on the bubble and then we get right back on the boat real quick. Uh, Okay. But now I've got anxiety about this anxiety thing that's coming later. No, it's, it's so fine. I I do want to say maybe this will help. I have a daughter now. Oh, and yeah. And she's Yay. doing great. Her name is Barbara Lee McElroy. We're calling her BB Lee. Um, and Lee is her middle name. It's not like a hyphenated thing. It's Barbara Lee McElroy, BB Lee. Uh, she was born on October 25th. Um, she was a little early, but she's healthy and she's home and everything's going great. Teresa's can I ask you? Doing can, great. I gotta ask a question. She's, she's a, a beautiful baby and congratulations. But, um, which was the baby, the egg or the sperm? Do you know, like, cause you're right up against well, it now. I mean, I, I really thought it was the sperm, but now I'm convinced that the sperm is just piloting. Yeah, sure. The egg. And that really makes the most sense to me, Griffin. I gotta tell you. Good. Um, but BB's doing great. Teresa's doing great. Uh, we're all doing great. Um, you know, I, and I do, I, I do want to say I have been deeply moved and by everybody on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere that has just like, since she was born, poured out so much support and love. And like, everybody has been so like happy to see pictures of her. And, you know, we, we spent a little time in the NICU and it was very scary at first. And knowing that there was just this like squad of people, this like huge, uh, like support network of people telling us like, Hey, it's going to, it's going great. You guys are great. Everything's going to be fine. She looks beautiful. Like all that stuff. It meant the world to us. Um, so we just want to say thank you for everybody who has uh, supported us. Uh, during the beginning of uh, this new phase of our family. So thank you, everybody. Um, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. Um, thank thank you very much. It's a good song. Also want to thank Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Go to MaximumFun.org and just click on all the shows you see there. You're going to love uh, more than six of them, I bet. Uh, also, we have a bunch of other uh, podcasts and video projects that we do. You can find all those at McElroyShows.com. Um, and Did you guys announce the February for release date for the My Brother, My Brother and Me TV show? We on did. CISO? We talked about that last week. But yeah, February, what is it, 21st? 23rd. 23rd. 23rd, 23rd of course. That is when the Mbim Bim show is going to come out on CISO. We've seen some rough cuts of the episodes now and... Uh, guys, you're gonna, you're just gonna love it's it. It's gonna fix everything. Yeah, it's gonna fix it all. Justin, did you talk about you and Sydney going on the Joko cruise? Yeah, well, I talked mentioned on Sawbones. I didn't mention it here. Uh, we're gonna be Sydney and I are gonna be on the Joko cruise. Uh, we're gonna be. It's gonna be in March, I believe. Um, we're there with a ton of cool people. Uh, John the Colton, obviously, Will Wheaton, uh, our our buddy Hal Lublin, um, 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 Night Vale. Uh, is going to be there uh, a ton of uh, Gail Simone, like a ton of really cool uh, folk, Matthew Weiner, creator of Mad Men. Like it's going to be a really cool thing. And if you go to jokocruise.com, you can get a cabin and come on the cruise with us. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? So real quick bubble. Hey, everybody. It's Travis. Go vote. Please. It's, God. If you're, if you're hearing this on Monday or Tuesday, go vote. I, November 8th is mine and Justin's birthday. This is our special birthday episode. All we want for your, our birthday, if you're a registered American voter and you have the ability to go vote, go vote. I will also say, because it is my birthday, go vote for Hillary Clinton because I yeah. want her to win and I definitely don't want Donald Trump to win. So yeah, please do that for us. Yes. Anyway, go please. vote. And now wait and wait, you hear that sound? Please go vote for Hillary Clinton and pop. That was the anxiety bubble. Oh, we're off of it, and that means we're back on the cruise. Do you guys want to go ahead and sign off, and I'll just play us out? How's that sound? Yeah, yeah you want to final? Good. You guys want that final Yahoo? Yeah, go for yeah. it. Yeah, this final Yahoo was sent in by Level Nine Thousand Yadru Drew Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's Yadru Answers user Beccarella who asks, "Alice in Wonderland Two book I'm writing." <laughs> 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 I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Boat drinks. Boys in the band ordered boat drinks. Visitors scored on the home rink. 
Everything seems to be wrong. I'm gonna do a mashup. Keep going. <laughs> Lately, and I said, "What about me from from and and she and She fair. said, "Well then." Remember I gotta the fly to sing somewhere. Losing time. I'm close. Time for you to go out to the place well, you will. You guys are ruining it. Well, There's no way to go. Keep going. Keep going. This is super. Closing time. In the hockey you don't game. have to go home, but this you is a can't nightmare to think. You're ruining it. You're ruining everything. Here. No, you're Nobody doing great. Nobody cares. They're all and too I far said, far "What away. about people are not going to be able to isolate this Closing time and both drinks came I'm in. I'm going to start over. What? I'm going to start over. If you don't, if you keep going, I'm going to start okay. over. You okay. don't have to go home, but you can't in the hockey stay games on. here. Nobody cares. Both drink in. I'm just going to edit this out. Both drink and both drink and both drink. 20 degrees Boat in drinks. the hot Let's do a round going. Boat drinks <laughs> Boat drinks Boat drinks Boys boat in the drink. boat I drinks where the face Boys in the van slow. with the boat You're drinks Boat drinks People boat love drinks. what I'm saying Boys and you're ruining the, it for Justin them. fucking We're doing a round Stop, stop saying Alright Travis, shut up. Travis shut up Travis shut up, Travis, shut up. Boat okay. drinks I'm starting over This is the beginning okay. again Boys in the band Ordered boat drinks Boat drinks, drinks. Boat drinks in the band order boat. It was in the band order boat drink. You're ruining the no, song. No, we're doing we're rounds. Okay, Here's, try it again. There's no rounds. It won't sink properly. Okay, yeah, start again. Here we go. Here we go. You're right. You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. Boat drinks. Boat drinks. Boat. The, I'm gonna start again. Boat no, I'm trying drinks. to do an echo. Boat drinks. Boat drinks. <laughs> it's not gonna sink. It's gonna sound like garbage. Starting again. Boat drinks. Drinks. Boat drinks. 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 Boys in the band order boat drinks. Boat drinks. drinks. One. Drinks. Don't use it too early. Visitors They're scored on, on the home rink. rink. Everyone, Everyone seems, seems to be, to be wrong. fine. Rob, just fine, isolate the out for the fun. rest of it. I'll just take off my headphones. It's fine. 20 24. degrees. Travis, we can say whatever the fuck we want to <laughs> now. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett made of farts. Justin's piloted by fart sperm. Jimmy Buffett is a garbage artist. Him all warm. <laughs> He's all a fartist. Nobody can hear Go that. Go print out a Jimmy Buffett song lyric <laughs> chart and then throw it in the fucking garbage. slow. Could you be me somewhere? I'm gonna Mr. put Scott. all of Jimmy Buffett's songs on a jump drive and flush Any it down a toilet. Place here on Earth or in space. Ah, Justin, can you hear this? You pick the century and I'll pick the spot. This is all fair use, Jimmy James. I know. I should be leaving this climate. I've got a verse, but can't rhyme it. Ooh, and got about go where Tuesdays with warm. Maury. All right, now now you guys can sing all of this part because we're just going to repeat. Okay, great. All right. I'm going to skip the last verse. We're right, just going to repeat. Go. I got to okay, go where it's warm. I got to okay. go where it's warm. I got to go where it's warm. I got to go where it's warm. Ghost, keep fucking singing. Drinks. It's <laughs> going on the home ring. Is that it? You're doing Everything great. seems to be wrong. And resolve the chord progression. I gotta go where it's warm. And the end of the show. Boat drinks. Oh no, God, you resolved it. Boat drinks. Boat. <laughs> Please resolve it. Boat drinks. My, my, my anxiety is through the fucking roof right now. You're just worried about JB suing us. Well, don't be. He's a very chill dude. He's not in it for the money. First ever Chicago Podcast Festival is just around the corner. Don't miss your shot to catch Max Fun's own Bullseye, Lady to Lady, and Minority Corner performing live for your entertainment. Split Single was just added to the Bullseye lineup in addition to the previously announced and amazing Dwayne Kennedy and Andre Royo. Bullseye and Lady to Lady are November 17th, and Minority Corner is November 18th. Visit MaximumFun.org and peep the live shows column on the right side to grab your tickets right now before time runs out.
MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.